Good morning, guys. It's Jules. Thanks for coming along for another Stitch With Me. Yes, we are going and to do something a little bit different today. Um, I had planned on doing one of the blended projects, and um, I had issues with it, so I decided not to do it because I needed to get a video done. And I was having problems finding some things, so I decided not to do it. Hello, birds. Birds, I'm covering you up just a little bit more, birds, because to be perfectly honest with you, I can't focus when you chirp at me the whole time. So anyway, so we're going to do some uh, honeybee portrait today, and um, and we'll talk about why I need to get my blended projects organized a little bit better. So, But, because we haven't done a whole lot, I don't think we've really done much on this project since the last stitch with me. So this is a good opportunity to do this. This is also a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about gridding. Um, what did I do with my glasses? Because i got to wear my glasses for this, because my glasses are helping me see. My glasses... All right, now I'm gonna start off with this whole gridding thing. So I've been using pencil. I agree with everybody that it's probably not the best thing to do. Um, so we're gonna go back to our tried and true fine point, fine point mark be gone, which you can see down below in the description if you uh, need to get one from Amazon. And I could erase this, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's such a tiny piece of. Uh, this project that I'm just not going to worry about it. So for right now, I'm just going to trace over what I've gotten done so far. Ooh, I'm going to need to get myself some new marking pens. I'm getting a little, getting a little dull here. Getting a little running out of little stuff. Um, okay, I'm making. I'm good. Don't. Yeah. Oh, I can't talk. Um, I'm doing it this way, but I'm actually going to come out here. So I'm going to redo this while we're just in here and talking. So the reason why I did do the blood project, I could have still done the blended project. I had some issues this morning, and I'm like, I cannot find the pages for my blended thought, my blended project. I'm like, I can't find them. I don't know what happened to them. I can't believe I'm this. I'm this. I'm so disorganized, and I know I am at times, but especially with the patterns, but I'm like, I can't find it. I can't find it. Where is it? And then I finally, I finally, I'm like, you know what? Let me just do honeybee portrait for the week. Cause I know you guys will like that. And it'll give me another week to get the blended projects up and running a little bit better. But I come upstairs, lo and behold, and I realize why I can't find my blended project papers. Cause it's all in the book. I'm such a dork. I got my thing and I got my projects on it. I'm like, I'm like, Holy cow, I can't believe I forgot. You know what? I haven't worked on them in forever. That's why I forgot that. So, oi. Oi, oi, oi. All right, we're going to come across here. And do that. And do that. And do this. Because what I did was I only brought up one color to work on because there's one color that's used awful lot in this area. So I'm just going to go just looking at what I got to do. Hmm, I don't think I highlighted as much as I should have. Let's see, where am, where am I? Where am I? What's going on? Um, if that's one, two, three, four across, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, I've done more than I thought I have. That's good. That's good. Let's go over a little bit more. So when I when I grid, everybody grids differently. Um, you know, t technically you say you know there are so many stitches in like an an inch. That's it. isn't that how it goes? I just count. I just think it's easier, and I'm a kind of a control freak when it comes to that. So if I count, it makes it just that much better for myself. The problem comes when I, I put my hand, my right hand here, as I end up shadowing what I'm doing. But I just have to focus. So hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. So I count ten across. I make a little mark there just to check my work. And then I'm going to go back and make sure that I have ten. And I do. So you might even see sometimes that I'll actually, even with the pen, mark on the, I'll actually make marks as I go back across. That's not a problem because this marker absolutely 100% washes out. Tried and true, tested. 100%. And so, all 
All right, I'm gonna come across here and do it again because I just wanna, I can get the whole page, the top part of this page gridded today, so. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. All right. So we got that. There we go. Um, and that might be enough. There's only like another five stitches over here, but I'm going to leave that for now. And kind of just look at stitching. Well, first I'm going to highlight a little bit because I think that I stitched without highlighting and I just threw a needle behind my head. Did not realize I had a needle on that. Oh my goodness gracious. I, I have been poking myself left and right with needles. I need to do a big needle cleanup. Big needle cleanup. Get that all the way across. I mean, gosh knows I need to get more of this project done, period. Because it's so beautiful. And as you guys know, we gave one away recently. And the, and the uh, fortunate person who won it is extremely happy about it. I wish you the best of luck in stitching it. Because it's, it's going to be gorgeous. I mean, it's a, first of all, it's a hate, right? So we all know it's going to be gorgeous. And second of all, it's just gorgeous. Birds, how are you talking this much and you're all covered up? It's because you hear me talking? You hear me talking. Hold on a second here. Got my flossy. Got my flossy flosses. Messed up a little bit here. So I was stitching a lot yesterday. Stitching a lot. It's pretty, uh... Pretty into it this past couple of days. Stitched on Rainy Waterloo. Stitched on Old World Map 2. Um, finished that page on Reaper. Found the next page on Reaper. Even more impressive, to be perfectly honest. So I've already started gridding the next page. I think I'll put some stitches in. Still dealing with my darn cat bite there and it's coming together it's 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 built it's filling in from the inside out and I make it a point most of the time when I'm dealing with a bite wound from my own I don't necessarily try and close it up faster than it wants to close that's how you prevent infections I had a friend of mine who uh, recently got bit multiple times by a dog who attacked her dog and she, uh, hold on here. And she, uh, she got bit like all in her, like in the meaty part of her uh, fingers and her thumbs and whatnot and on her legs as well. And I don't know if she saw my comment, but I was like, sister, I'm like, you ever have a bite wound? No matter what they say, I mean, they, they're never going to stitch up a bite wound for the most part unless it's really hideous. But what you need to do is you need to get yourself some betadine um, or povidone basically povidone iodine but we call it betadine and um, it's that that brownish orange orange stuff that comes super thick they, they use it for surgical disinfection of like wounds and incision sites and things like that and so what you have to do is in whatever whatever you need to soak fill up a a, um, a bowl or whatever you need to do with super warm water like as warm as you can handle and you put it in there until it's the color of like strong tea then you soak the area that you need to disinfect but you do it with your you do it with the ability to move your fingers all the time because it'll help kind of sort of manually flush the stuff in and out but you do that and then when you're done I wouldn't even rinse that much but I would just keep you just gotta work your fingers and work your fingers you gotta your blood supply needs to get into those areas. Your lymphatics need to be able to pull junk from those areas. And I don't think she did it because she ended up getting a really bad infection, needing IV antibiotics. Um, but just speaking from someone who's had multiple bite wounds throughout my life due to my job, that would be my recommendation to any of you guys if anything ever happened. Hopefully nothing ever will. So... 
let's get off of that nasty topic. And now that we're almost 10 minutes in, the, well, now we are 10 minutes in this video, let's actually start stitching. So, buttons, but, hold on, I gotta get, just get this started. What's up with you guys? You guys stitching on whatever you like to today? You got some good stitching going? Is it a good day for you? Thanks for um, commenting. I uh, I haven't filled in the map yet. Look at that. I did that a little bit off. I'm going to cover that up. Ah! Stash! Ah, stab myself again! Oh, dudes, I am like doing this left and right lately for some reason. I'm, a, I'm a, just a big klutz. I apologize for yelling. I apologize for that. That was not nice of me. It was kind of unavoidable, but I'm sorry. I yelled right into the mic. And you guys probably stabbed yourselves. I'm sorry. I hope nobody was driving. You shouldn't be driving anyway because I'll put you to sleep with these talks. I'll put you right to sleep with these talks. Um, but anyways, so's. Okay, I see what I'm doing. Come down here. We're gonna get a lot stitched today, babes. We're gonna get a lot stitched. So, um, so yeah, so what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, what are you guys working on? Oh, the map thing. The map, yeah. So, um, yeah, I might do a little video later of me with the dogs filling in the map. Maybe the dogs will help me fill in the map. But gosh, knows they need to do something, they need a job, they need to work. So, ah, pull it through again. Um, yeah, we might do that a little bit later. Get a little dog video in. Kind of being run a little ragged at the moment. I was so tired yesterday. I should have done the video, but worked my booty off at work. Came home, was tired, and really just wanted to, I didn't want to take a nap. So I started stitching, so that was me stitching yesterday on stuff, and yeah, let's get this in the view better, and uh, watch the Preakness, and what else did I do? Played a lot of World of Warcraft, uh, gotten addicted to that game again. The good thing is, is that I can play a little bit, and then I can stitch a little bit. I can play a little bit, and I can stitch a little bit. And so, it's it's very therapeutic, and it's it's needed. I've been. It's the only thing I really do for even even stitching is like stitching is fun, but stitching I think of in terms of okay, what do I need to get done this week? What do I want to get done to show folks for the for the video? And although it's still fun, I still think of it as like, okay, I've got to get this stuff done. And so, versus the game where I'm not, I don't have anything associated with it that I need to need to get done. So I just play because it's fun. And I run around and I'm so bad at the game, but I enjoy it. But I can, I can stitch at the same time. I'll do some stitches and then I'll get some other stuff done. That. How do I get this down here? Yeah. Ah, let's pull that out again. Let me look here. Just right here. But five day weekend coming up, kids. Five day weekend. It's gonna be busy. But I'm just trying to roll with the flow. Rolling with the flowing. Okay, San Jose Shark fans. I'm not talking much about my blues because I know I got a lot. I got some shark fans, passionate shark fans on this channel that are just as crazy about this playoffs as I am. So, 
It's just been... I can't even watch the games. Like, I have the game on behind me. I sit at my computer desk now all the time. And I have the games on behind me. And I kind of listen out, and I'll turn around when it sounds like the Blues are kind of ramping up their momentum and whatnot. But for the most part, I just let it go on behind me because I get so crazy about the games that I just, I can't, I cannot emotionally handle it. Because I realized that when the last series, the last playoffs, um, the last round, sorry, um, and the, the Blues had to win in overtime in order to, uh, and it was double overtime when they finally won, but when they finally won, I was so wrapped up in it, I just burst into tears when they won. I just cried and cried and cried. And I'm like, okay, I don't need to let myself get this ramped up over this. And uh, so I care, but I'm trying not to care too much because we have a history of having problems with coming through. But I still love the team. What a great year. Well, what a great year since January 1st. But... Anyways, so the, the stitching table that I sit at here, um, it's just a regular, like it's an old kitchen table basically, kind of one of those old cheaper kitchen tables. Almost, it could be a desk too. Um, it uh, basically, I've cleaned off almost all of it. It's been pretty full filled up with things, but made a conscious, well, the last, remember when I, do you guys remember when I was talking about that whole magic of tidying up and how that lady, like, is, has some issues, but for the most part, it's a great idea. Now, I'm, I'm not somebody who, like, as you guys all well know, I don't take one thing and work on it obsessively till completion. For the most part, I don't. I... My attention strays, shiny object syndrome, SOS, and uh, I just end up doing too many other things. I'm going to highlight while I'm thinking about it. Um, and so what I've been doing since I read most of that book is I've just been going through, when the mood strikes, the overall, um, the overall idea is definitely to get rid of so much junk that we don't need, we don't use, we don't need to have around. And in doing so, it makes everything easier to clean. It looks tidier because there's just less stuff. And it's a, it's a good way to live. I mean, it's definitely helped in some of the rooms of the house to have less things out and about. So... So we're kind of working on it up here in the room where the gecko and the birds and the cat kind of reside. So I threw out a couple of old, smaller fish tanks and some other things the other day. And so this room has getting a lot more potential. There's, there's more, there's, we've got a big, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm looking at it right now. What's it called? Shelving unit. Thank you. Gee whiz. A shelving unit. And it's about a third empty now versus being totally full before. So I'm able to kind of move some things that should really be on that over. And then I also pulled, I still had stuff sitting on the desk from when I did my year preview of the stitching and the, the projects that I had that I hadn't started work, working on. <laughs> I, uh, it was just funny. I just didn't have those, uh, uh, I just never put them up back in, back in my, uh, my bedroom where everything kind of sits up. So I finally got that done and it's provided me with a lot more room. So we'll just, I don't do it all at once. Just do a little bit at a time and just make a conscious effort not to bring more things in at the same time and it works out pretty well. So, so I'm happy about that. Doop 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 doop. Doop 
Doop doop doop doop. I gotta definitely clean the bird cage. It's gonna happen in the next week. I'm not good at cleaning bird cages often enough. Did I bring scissors up? Ooh, did I not bring scissors up? Do I have it? Ow! Poke my thumb again. Do I have any up here? Oh, I do not. That's gonna be in the way. Alright, I'm gonna pause this while I do that. Come on, the scissors! Dink! <laughs> ah, husband has gone to the store. Sunday morning store run. We're gonna get some burgers this afternoon. Some burgers, some burgers, some burgers. <sighs> Where am I? Oh yeah, I was cutting this. And uh games at one. Good to go. We are good to go. We're gonna be good and we're good to go. So dudes. You gotta Google something. If you're not squeamish, you gotta Google something that we saw on uh I don't know, it was Yahoo or something this week that my husband pointed out to me. So this happened actually like at least a couple of years ago. I think maybe two or three. Ah, these need to be sharp. These are like getting dull and need to be sharpened. Um, the uh, There's this um, story out there that about this kid who was on the playground. So I think she's like, she was maybe like 10 when this happened, 10 or 11, I'm not sure. And she fell, and somehow a pencil fell out of her shirt or pants or I don't know, whatever. But when she fell, she fell on top of the pointed end of a number two pencil. And it went into her neck, like the side, like kind of like, well, not the, the front of the neck, but also sort of the side of the front of the neck, like not straight into the center. And... It was embedded like, I don't know, two inches into her neck or something, or at least a solid inch into her neck. And it didn't really bleed, which was pretty freaking incredible because what they found out was that the needle was actually embedded into her common carotid artery. And that is like the major artery that feeds, it's, it was on the left side, I think, so it feeds sort of all the left side of your your neck, your your face, your your brain, you know, goes all the way up. It's a major vessel. Had, had somebody gone and ripped that pencil right out, she would have bled out and died in like 30 seconds. She would have been dead. But it didn't bleed. And they took her to the ER, or this trauma center or whatever, and, oh, this was up in Canada. And, um... They were freaking out because, it again, it wasn't bleeding, but you could tell something was very badly wrong because the um, pencil moved with the beat of her heart. And so they were worried that it was somehow connected or doing something with that one of the arteries because that's why it would move with the beat of the heart or the beat of your heart. And so, anyway... So they took her, they had to fly her to this mega hospital in Toronto, I think, um, to, uh, to you know, do, they did all kinds of tests beforehand and they found, yes, indeed, it was buried in, inside of her artery. Um, and amazingly enough, they were able to go in and remove it, you know, kind of clamp off the artery before they did anything and then sew the artery up. And they followed her for a couple of years after um, all that, and she's still doing great. She never had any complications. She never had anything like a stroke afterwards. Um, it was absolutely just, I mean, right there, that's your, you know, if you have only a couple lives or whatever, you know, like cats have nine lives, how many do we have? Uh, that was definitely one of those. That was a, you were not meant to die that day kind of thing. So, ah, snag, snag, snag. I know I'm sitting here thinking, and you guys are thinking, I should untwirl my thread. I should. Let me 
pop out this. There we go. All right, let me do that a second here. There we go. Um, that was crazy. That was crazy. The pictures are crazy too. They're 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 gross slash cool. Where am I? I keep saying, where am I? What's going on? Who's here? Anyway, yeah, this whole, uh, we're going to just do the same color for this whole stitch with me. I think a lot done, but... So, let's also talk about my boy Doogie, um, whose now nickname is now Oogie Boogie Doogie, and uh, he's a cute little guy. He had, you may have caught it on a couple of the pet videos, his face didn't look quite right for the last, oh... Honestly, it started going bad in November, and what was going on was he was starting to get some crusting around one of his eyes, on his like the 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 lips of his eyelid lids, like or the well, I don't know what you call them, the very tips of the lids. So he was getting like just a lot of irritation. It was crusting. It was bleeding, and so I put a cone on him. Started using ointment, some antibiotic and steroid ointment to calm everything down. I didn't know what had happened to him. I thought he maybe had stuck his face into something and started off with some inflammation or who knows what. And he got better. And he was almost cured. And I didn't follow through on my treatment because that's, what's, that's what vets do to their own dogs. We don't always follow through to the end. And it came back with a flourish. It came back on both lids. It was on just the upper lid. Came back on both lids, and then his nose started crusting over. And I was like, huh, okay. So, 20 years of experience, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, that really looks like it's an autoimmune disease there. He wasn't feeling good, um, you know, just all these different things. And I'm like, yeah, that's got to be autoimmune. So I put him on various drugs, and with the goal of trying to suppress his immune system, calm it down so that his body could heal. And three weeks go by, or multiple, actually, it was probably more like six, And because I did three weeks at a pretty decent dosage, and his lesions did not respond, so I upped the dosage, and then added in supplements and different things, and he just, he wasn't getting any better. I mean, and it was just, I mean, he just was... It, it just was crusting, like, to no end. I mean, just these big, thick crusts that I would kind of take off his eye and take off his eyelid, and he would cry and put some ointment on it, and it was bleeding underneath. I mean, I'm just like, what the heck is this? If this isn't, you know, whatever. So finally, I'm like, all right, let me go back and start over and do things a different way. So I took him off all the medication, and he, and he stabilized. He didn't seem to get any worse. He, you know, just whatever. And... I uh, took some biopsies of the area and discovered, which was, I've never really seen this, but discovered that what he had was just a very severe bacterial infection along with a bunch of uh, demodex mites. And demodex mites, it's kind of form of the mange, you'd say. 
but it's a non-contagious form of the mange and usually pops up when you have some sort of immunosuppression. Now it could be that they popped up as a result of me doing the drugs or they could have been there before and they made it worse with the immunosuppressive drugs. It's just kind of impossible to know. Um, hold on, I'm just looking at this. All right, so they recommended that I do, that I treat the mites and then I also put them on pretty strong antibiotics and blah, 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 blah. So I did and holy crap, did he start getting better right away. And I've just never seen a case like that before. It was so strange. Like, it was so classic. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, it was just, it, it was a learning experience for me. I'm glad it was on my own dog and nobody else's dog had to go through that. But he looks, he's virtually cured now after two weeks of treatment. He looks amazing. We're going to finish up a little bit. We're going to finish up longer with his treatment, but make sure it stays totally away. But he looks amazing. The problem is, is that he lost a lot of the pigmentation on his eyelids. So whereas he used to have um, black eyelids, he now has nice pink eyelids. So he looks like he got burned. You know, he looks like a burn victim, sort of. I'm not making a joke. I'm just making an observation. But he's way happier, way more comfortable. Um, everything is back to Doogie B and Oogie Boogie Doogie. But he wasn't, he didn't make the rounds on videos for a while because he looked hideous. He was very scary looking. And so, but I finally got it done. A few lessons to myself. Assuming, just because it's my own dog, assuming and kind of shortcutting things, but it's all good in the end. There we go. We're coming up on the one year anniversary of getting the gecko and the birds. So that puts Carter the gecko at at least, is he six, I think? And the birds are turning 10 at least. Yeah, you are. Yeah, happy birthday. And um, so pretty amazing stuff. Let me highlight a bit. Oh, beat. <clears throat> Still not 100% over this whole cold thing. I might, I think it's just some allergy inflammation. And uh, I still will sometimes have a little something something that makes me cough like, like I, got, like I got a hairball, I'm trying to get it out. And I almost feel like that's what it is. But, oh well. Husband made some ribs yesterday. Smoked some ribs. So tasty. So tasty. Happy graduation week to all those people who have kids that are graduating from school this week. In my area, we've got two 
um, schools that are, um, not two schools, what am I talking about? Two kids that we know of that are graduating that we know pretty well and have graduation parties to attend coming up. And so that will be fun. New chapter in everybody's lives. Exciting for the kids, sad for the parents. But exciting for the kids. Happy for them. Both of them are two different families, both great kids. Both have lots of promise. One is going to the University of Kansas in the fall with the intent, at least right now, the intent is to go into medicine eventually. Um, and the other one is going to stay local for a few years at least, get all the undergrad stuff done. At, like local community colleges, I really like the way he's doing this. And he's going to get all of his, all of his, you know, his mandatory undergrad, you know, like your math and your English and all that, everything you have to get done, basic biology. And then, um, his family is originally from Hawaii. They, um, their families have lived in Hawaii for generations until they moved out here. And he still has some extended family out there, but what he wants to do is he wants to do marine biology. And so once he has uh, gotten everything done here, he hopes to be able to transfer out there into their marine biology school because that is one of the best places to go for that. So he's, he's well on his way. Good for him. stitching down today, aren't we kids? Yes, we are. I'm trying to think of what other movies are coming up here real soon that we're excited about. Um, really looking forward to, which I know it's, it's just, it's funny. It's funny in a way, but I'm really looking forward to the new Godzilla movie coming out. I really liked the last Godzilla movie. I've probably seen it like 30 times. And um, it, I, I just love the way they portray Because in Japanese culture, Godzilla is a hero. And that's how he's portrayed in the movies, as a legendary hero who saves humanity or protects the world from other you know, horrible creatures and whatnot. And I just really enjoyed it last... Uh, last time around and then the next one coming out is even it's they're i mean they're what they're doing is literally like they're just hollywoodizing the um hold on a second pauses all right i just had a little note that i was upstairs they don't need to bark um but they're it's like they're doing a remake of i mean it's not but it's like they're doing things in the style of where the way that the old Japanese um, uh, movies were. And what is the? Oh man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be wrong about this. Is it kaji? Or am I thinking of kaji as like the skill? Kaji, the word kaji as meaning a skill set or a skill, or is kaji the the mythical creatures? I think they're the mythical creatures. If I had it, I tell you what. If I had my choice of superpowers, my superpower would be human translator, or even just translator, period. Um, I could understand everybody, and, oops, there we go, right here. 
because I just love to know more. I just don't sit down and study what I need to to learn a language. But I think it would be so cool to be able to just speak to anybody <clears throat> in their language. And it would be so neat. But anyway, so, I don't know, is kaji the right word? If anybody knows Japanese or if i got any Japanese listeners, watchers out there, it would be cool. Um, let's also talk about... Alright, so here's the funny thing, guys. So, no, I did not... I never... I, I watched the first... We talked about Game of Thrones a little bit. My husband's a big fan. Not as big of a fan of this last season. Not a big fan of this last season, but that's okay. No big deal. Um, and uh, so last week, he was watching the, the, the episode, and uh, I was playing WoW, and I kind of kept turning around and watching part of it, because I'm like, oh, yeah, stuff's happening. Oh, what's happening now? You know, But I didn't ask. I don't ask questions while it's going on, because, you know, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person, but um, I asked some questions about it when it was over and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay. And so I basically let myself become fully spoiled. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to go back and watch all this. I am one of those types that I don't like to watch, for the most part, human suffering, horrible things done by horrible people. Not a big fan of that. Never really watched the CSIs, didn't watch the... SVUs, you know, I don't, I don't watch that. I try to stay away from the news, you know, I'm, I'm just, that's just kind of how I am. And I'm going to go down and get this little one right there. But I started asking questions. So I kind of like, all right, well, what's going on here? And what's going on there? And then who's this and who's that? that after the show was over. So then I watched some videos last week and spoiled myself on everything going on so that I could at least be like, okay, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, you know what? Now I don't have to watch the whole show. Woohoo! Save myself hours. There's still so many more things that I want to see. If I ever get back into watching TV. I think we're going to cut way back on our cable once uh, once we're uh, once we're done with Game of Thrones this week. We'll call and cut our cable package back. We need good internet. We need great internet, but we don't need when we when we um, when we got married and we moved into the same. Uh, we moved in. You know, he moved in here. Um, we you know we got a pretty good deal on this massive package, but now it's like yeah, we don't need it. I mean, we watched like three channels, and uh, once the St. Louis series is over, you can you can find like really good TV now for like fifty bucks or less a month. You can do and get to vast majority of the channels that you'll probably watch. Um, you can there's a YouTube package that lets you watch it. So you can actually watch it like on your TV, not TV, um, well you can watch it on your TV if you had like a PlayStation or Xbox, you can watch it through there. You can watch it on your computer, you can watch it on your phone. We might do something like that, or we might do PlayStation View, which is a little less expensive, has less channels, but I think it has the channels that we would watch. And um, we would just watch it through the um, PlayStations. So... I'm going to come down here. Actually, I'm going to highlight here. What are you fluttering about over there, there, buddy? So anyway, so... That's kind of where we're at with that. But that'll be something we'll do once Game of Thrones... I bet you a lot of people do that. Cancel their HBO or take their cables down or their cable package down or something. I wouldn't be surprised. Could be over here. But what I do want to do at some point is I'll probably try it and listen to the books. Because I feel like I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I think that's a better way for me to go about ingesting the material instead of watching it. 
it's a little easier to listen to it and doesn't maybe it's not as graphic when you're just listening to it. We'll see, but speaking of listening to it, so I started finally listening to the last Dresden. I'm about three hours in, maybe four ish. I'm still trying to like it's like well, I'm having a hard time getting into it, but it's not grabbing me real quick right off the bat yet, but it, I'm sure it'll get there. It should get there at some point coming up here. And, uh... Shoo. And then I've got other books that came through this week. So i got like four books right now on my plate. Because back when I was... I was really into it. Like I was listening to a book like every three days. Finishing a book every three days. And, um... I started making lists. Oh, I want to. I want to listen to this one. I want to listen to this one. And and so I I went in and I reserved them. And now I'm kind of falling behind because I got out of the habit there for a bit. Hair. Gonna get me another thing of flaws. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Oh, I'm gonna come up here. Start on this part now. I was so physically tired yesterday when I got home. I um been trying to be a bit more active, get a bit stronger, and so my body's been tired. And uh, between, between a lot of craziness on Friday, a lot of physicality, and then Saturday morning, I was just exhausted. And today I woke up and I'm definitely, I need a stretch. I need to get in there and do a bit more, have a bit more uh, fitness here. Where am I? Hold on. Stay on target. Stay on target. Ah, I better highlight, I can highlight this little piece here. I'm going to get off. But, just trying to get my legs stronger, my back stronger, my core stronger, everything stronger. Getting strong now. The great news is, is that my neck has not flared at all at this point. I think I've, I might have finally broken through the trapezius issue that I've always had, the trapezius issue being the um, the soreness, being the soreness of um, um, like your trapezius is a like a triangle shaped muscle that like if this is your shoulder and this is the like your neck and then your shoulder blade is here, the space in between all that is the trapezius. And it connects to your neck, your lower neck. And so for anybody who has had neck issues, um, meaning like, you know, you've had chronic neck pain, neck surgery, anything like that, your trapezius has been bearing the burden of trying to stabilize and manage your neck issue. So when you are um, having issues with your neck, your trapezius is always going to be involved. Is what basically what I'm saying. So what I'd had years of neck issues, and my trapezius being constantly like spasming and needed to be stretched, and it was just over over tense. But it wasn't getting any stronger. It was just over tense. And so when the neck problem got fixed, the trapezius ended up being fairly weak. And anytime I attempted to try to strengthen it, and uh, even or if I wasn't attempting to strengthen it, but I just had to use it for some reason at work or at home or whatever, I was doing something that required me to use that muscle, the trapezius would inevitably spasm 
and then when it spasm it would lead to neck pain again so I finally f feel like I've pushed past that where I was getting adjusted well enough that when the neck flared I get the neck adjusted it would help calm the trapezius down and it allowed me to strengthen the trapezius through that and I feel like I might have finally broken through the level of you know to 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 the point where it's strong enough now where it's not having those issues that it used to have whenever I used it. I've been doing um, resistance bands and um, doing like upright rows and some different things to kind of help with that. And so it's allowed me to kind of move into sort of gently move into the next phase of working out which was working out my legs, my hamstrings, my back. And thankfully, because I can do that now, I'm, I'm reaching a point where I'm just stronger, period. And I can be sore without being in pain. Like, there's a difference between being sore and having, like, neck issues pain, that kind of thing. And so I might be turning a corner in this very long, drawn out period of not being able to work out. So we'll see. We shall see. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Except for I'm getting tight right now. <laughs> it's because of the way that I'm kind of bending over the bending over the um, table here for the cross stitch. So I think I'm going to like I'm just gonna work on this piece right now. Um, won't do any more stitching because I'm going to take the um, blended projects downstairs and work on organizing those today and stitching some on at least the Tower of Babel project. That was what I was supposed to do. I know I said Greenwich Village on the video the other day, but it's actually Tower of Babel that I was doing and then Greenwich Village. So Greenwich Village needs more attention in terms of organization. I have to regrid and I need to get my colors squared away a little better so I can work on that one. But let me work on both of those today. I did not show you guys the It Is Well or the With Charity pieces this past week. Didn't even realize until I was um, uh, going through my stuff looking for my patterns and I found I found the old uh, found this uh, fabric and I'm like oh guess I didn't talk about those so I'll work on some I'll work on those a little bit today too I get a lot of stitching done today I hope oh but just relaxing just relaxing <laughs> this is fun. It's fun to get a lot stitched on a project like this because there's not a lot of color change right now. Which is good. Oh, 
suppose you guys might like to see. Maybe. Maybe. Tried to be a, tried to be a, a little snaggerific, but it wasn't. So yeah, I'll be listening to Skin Game today, the Dresden book. I'm trying to get a chunk of that done. It's a little longer than, uh, well, no, maybe it's about the same. I'm thinking of the Odd Thomas books that are shorter. But I gotta finish that one. In the next couple of days. So. Boop a doop a doop a doop. Boop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop. Da 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 da. So it's kind of a quiet Sunday here. It's a little cool. Which I like, I like a lot. I've got a smaller piece of floss that I'm gonna use here. I don't know why I used I cut those shorter than normal, but I did. I think part of it is because when I'm doing the video, I normally would cut longer pieces to work, but it's a, they're harder to manage in the position that I put myself in to do the videos. So that's why. Been doing a better job of updating the blog this week. I'm gonna put some more pictures of stuff up today. That'll be good. And I need to update the current pictures for all the projects. And I also need to make sure I don't have every project up on um, the old uh, blog. I don't have every single project up, but we're getting there. <laughs> My stomach is rumbling. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I like it when I wake up in the morning and my stomach is like I'm hungry because I'm like, all right, metabolism is going. I like it. Hope all your stitch mania plans are coming together good. Of 
crazy stitch mania. Oh yeah, I gotta update that list. Yet another thing to do. I should have plenty of time to get it done today because I'm just slacking. Just a slacking. That's Car Wash. I know that's Car Wash. I like Car Wash. I like that song. It's a fun song. Speaking of Car Washes, I need to clean my car. The inside. I've, I did do the Car Wash not too long ago. Here, do this, huh? Do this, huh? All right, I'm gonna tie that off here. So, I think I'm gonna end this crazy stitch with me, honeybee portrait. Honeybee portrait, yep, because my phone just gave me a hey, your phone's about to run out kind of message. So I might take this down while I'm uploading and do a little bit more because I am enjoying myself working on it and I haven't been working on it as much. So I may get a bit more done, maybe come back if I've got the colors and fill all this in. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Um, I hope you got a lot of work done on your projects. I gotta take both of these crazy. Here's the uh, Greenwich Village project, and I got to take both these downstairs and work on it. And then, I, like I said, I found the Page and Reaper. I got a lot of stuff going on, man. It's so exciting. And so, and my Tower Babel. So it's a lot easier because it's just it's all the same color right now. So it's coming along nicely versus this one. It's all different colors. So, oh, husband gets home soon, so I can get some oatmeal. Get some oatmeal, and uh, we'll be ready to go, kitties. Oh, but you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your support and your watching, your listening, and everything that you do. Um, I really do appreciate it a ton. And um, I will see you guys this week. We'll see what kind of progress we make. And uh, I'm excited about my five-day weekend coming up. See what kind of progress we'll make during that time. I'm going to work on some of my smaller projects, so I feel like I'm making some progress. But uh, we'll be good to go. You guys have a great rest of your weekend or whatever day it is, and I will see y'all next time.